All right, y'all. So we're going to get started on the uh, animal behavior lab. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through the setup that I want you to have on your um, notebooks. So if you don't have a notebook yet, or at least a piece of paper or two, you're going to want to go get those. Also, you're going to need a writing utensil. I'm using a pen, so it's easier for you to see on camera, but it's actually a lot better for you to take um, notes in lab and do your data and stuff with a pencil. So try to get a pencil, mechanical or um, the regular wooden pencils are both fine. But again, a pencil is much better because that way you can erase data and then rewrite it in the same space without having to remake your tables. Okay. So again, I'm going to walk you through the setup. We're going to kind of go through some basics. And then I'm going to present your data for you because obviously you can't do the lab in person. So I'm going to be collecting data for you and you're going to get to kind of watch the process of that for now. Um, let me share my screen so that we can look at stuff together about the um, okay, so for the introduction, ethology is the study of animal behavior. Behavior is an animal's response to sensory input and falls into two basic categories, learned and innate or inherited. Orientation behaviors place the animal in its most favorable environment. In taxis, the animal moves towards or away from a stimulus. Taxis is often exhibited when the stimulus is light, heat, moisture, sound, or chemicals. Kinesis is a movement that is random and does not result in orientation with respect to a stimulus. So again, kinesis is random and taxis is purposeful. If an organism responds to bright light by moving away, that's taxis. If an animal responds to bright light by random movements in all directions, that is kinesis. Agonistic behavior is exhibited when um, animals respond to each other by aggressive or submissive responses. Often the agonistic behavior is simply a display that makes the organism look big or threatening. Like when a cat kind of puffs up because it feels like it's scared by something um, or when a skunk raises its tail to make it look bigger before it sprays somebody. It is sometimes studied in the laboratory with betas or beta fish, right? Siamese fighting fish, they raise their fins when they're trying to um, intimidate another uh, fish on their territory. Mating behaviors may involve a complex series of activities that facilitate finding, courting, and mating with a member of the same species. However, we shall, won't be observing that today because we're gonna be working with organisms that are still in their larva stage, okay? So general observation of behaviors. In this lab, we're actually gonna be working with mealworms and not isopods, okay? Because I can go buy mealworms and I'm not gonna go stand outside for hours and try to catch like 30 um, pill bugs or isopods for um, the lab. So I bought mealworms, so we're gonna work with mealworms. Uh, mealworms are actually beetle larvae, and they're actually consumed in some places, right? You can fry them and then consume them, and they're a great source of protein. Um, so for the procedure, we're gonna place 10 worms with a small amount of bedding material in a Petri dish. Worms generally do not climb, but if they do, you may cover the dish with a plastic wrap or the uh, Petri dish cover. I'm not worried about that since the worms don't even move that much to begin with. So first off, we're gonna observe the worms for 10 minutes and make notes on their general appearance, movements about the dish and interactions with each other. Notice if they seem to prefer one area over another. If they keep moving, settle down or move sporadically, note any behaviors that involve two or more worms. Try to make your observations without disturbing the animals in any way. Do not poke or prod or shake the dish, make loud sounds or subject them to bright lights. Bright lights sorry. You want to observe their behavior and not influence it or be, uh, interfere with it. So before we actually get started with that, we're going to um, set up our journals for getting the data on this lab, okay? So as you can see, the page is kind of set up right now, but we're not gonna be using the actual documents since not everybody has the ability to print, and then we have to make all these edits. So I'm gonna show you what I want your um, kind of journal or notebook paper set up to follow along with. Okay, as you see, number three is make a detailed sketch of a mealworm. This is during your observations, so during those 10 minutes. And then number four is write a hypothesis and a null hypothesis based on your observation. So we're going to leave space for that on the pages. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you the uh, pages that um, I already kind of set up, and you're going to want to do something similar um, as you move along the lab. So I'm going to stop sharing, and... We're going to actually go ahead and record the pages now. Let me turn this up right. So over here, as you can see at the top of the page, I have the title and it says Animal Behavior Lab. Um, my handwriting's not the best, but as long as it's readable, that's all good, right? 
Same on behalf of you guys. If you want to type all of these, that's also fine. On the side, you're going to have your name and your date that you're starting the lab, the date of the start of the lab. And then over here, I have a little space left for observations. So when you have observations, you're going to be writing them down to so make sure you leave enough space. If you don't fill up all the space, that's okay, but you wanna leave enough space just in case you do write a lot, okay? The next section is sketch of a mealworm, like I said. And um, part of the observations is to draw a picture of a mealworm. So you're going to actually take a, uh, leave yourself a little space to draw a mealworm. Now, the next part that you're gonna do is the hypothesis. So you're gonna write an if-then statement for the hypothesis. Um, and we're gonna be, let me give you a little background. So mealworms actually live and they're in containers of like sawdust. And if you know anything about construction or about uh, pets, sawdust is quite dry and it's a little bit of um, textured material. So here is what sawdust looks like. And there's worms in, hidden in here. I'll fish them out for you guys in a second when you gotta observe them. But this is what sawdust looks like, right? Think about if it's dry or wet, and then you're gonna write a hypothesis statement based on if you like, sorry, if you think the mealworms like dry or wet environments and which one they will go to when they're given the choice of both, okay? The next one is you're gonna be writing a null hypothesis, okay? So the null hypothesis is going to be, there is no difference between the observed results of the wet and the dry, okay? So again, let me write that for you guys. So the null hypothesis in a chi-squared test is always going to be about um, observing no difference between the control and the manipulated variables of the experiment, right? So we're manipulating the environment to be dry or to be wet. And the null hypothesis is always gonna say there's no difference, right? So we're gonna write there is no significant difference between the observed and expected number of mealworms on the wet side versus the dry side, right? Because we're going to be having a dry side to our environment and a wet side, and we're going to be counting the number of them on the wet side versus the dry side to see if there actually is a significant difference. All right, so back to the um, slide that I was showing, where it says place 10 worms and you're going to observe them for about 10 minutes. I'm going to actually place the worms on a paper towel for you guys to just take a look at. And you guys are going to um, just fill out your observation section and your sketch of a mealworm section before you actually write your hypothesis. So I'm gonna have you guys set up your um, lab pages for the first page, and then you're going to do your observations. So if you need to pause before or during any part of this, feel free to just pause so that you can catch the information that you need, um, rewind so you can go over it again. And then um, if you need to copy anything down, um, make sure you copy anything down that you need to as, as well. So I'm going to make sure that you guys can see the actual setup where the mealworms will be. And I'm going to drop around as many as I can, honestly. I'm going to drop a couple mealworms down. And a lot of them aren't very active because I actually just had these in the refrigerator earlier. So they're kind of, they're kind of cold and unresponsive. So you know that bugs don't really like cold environments and we're kind of observing that right now with the mealworms. I'm gonna drop couple worms down for you guys to look at. And you're just going to, let's see if it'll focus on them. This one might actually be a dead one. Let's make sure they're all alive. 
and we're going to leave about 10 minutes of observations on there. Sorry, buddy, you can't leave. As you can see, some of them are moving quite quickly and I'm trying to keep it inside of the area where the camera can actually catch them. Sorry if the quality isn't the best, the camera's kind of auto-focusing right now. So again, you're going to want to take this time and write down any observations and you're going to want to make some drawings of the mealworms. Actually, we'll cut this down to probably around five minutes. As you make your observations, kind of observe what they're doing, if they're moving fast or slow. Um, their size, they're probably at long around an in, uh, at longest around an inch long. Um, some of them are skinnier, mark down their coloring, mark down their, um, if you want to, you can mark about their speed or their differences in speeds and kind of how they're moving around. Um, if you look at them up close, or if you want to look up a picture online of the mealworms, you can kind of see that their um, legs are geared towards the front of their body, and the rest of them is kind of trailing behind. Sorry, trying to keep these guys on screen is kind of a hassle right now. It's kind of interesting, actually. They don't really bite, but you can see as when I touch them, they kind of freak out for a second because to them, it's the same thing as like any large predator animal approaching them and trying to eat them. So they would squirm to try to get out of the gri um, gra grasp of some like predator. But obviously, I'm just trying to keep them on the screen for you guys to be able to see them. Okay, hopefully you guys can get a good gist of their behavior, what they look like, get a drawing in. They're not the prettiest creatures, but they're pretty easily manageable and they're pretty cheap to buy as well. Like a container of a hundred of them costs only like less than $5. So if you wanted to actually follow along into this lab for yourself, you totally could because they're sold at almost all pet stores. Anyways, I'll come back. Okay, so I'm gonna put them back and we're going to move on with our setup for our page and kind of get started on the actual lab. Okay, so moving forward. Oh, my hands are dirty now. Okay, so moving forward, I'm gonna screen share again. Um, so we are making sure that we have our observations down, we have our sketches down, and then we're going to write a hypothesis using if then statement about, do you think they prefer wet environments or dry environments and which one they would be more likely to move towards? Now, remember, I already wrote the null hypothesis. So if you wanna go back and uh, take a picture or pause in the video to capture that, that's totally fine. Now, we're gonna be observing kinesis in worms. So you're gonna prepare a choice chamber um, that I have already prepared, which is three Petri dishes 
with cuts in between them and they're going to be taped together so there's like a long pathway that the worms can travel through um, and I'm going to be putting paper towels in the bottom so that they have you know some kind of grip to walk on um, and then they will have one half of it be wet and one half of it be dry so that we can kind of observe two separate environments and which ones they prefer. Um, I'm going to be putting in about 10 worms at a time so it's even number so it's easy to see them moving to the left side or the right side, the dry side or the wet side. And then we're going to count how many worms are on each side for every 30 seconds of 10 minutes, which you are going to record on your data table. Okay. I'm going to show you how to set up your data tables in a second, but again, you'll be recording every 30 seconds and I'll be letting you know when you have to record and you're going to just count how many are on each side at a time. Um, afterwards, I'm going to return the worms and then I'm going to pick 10 more. Hopefully there's enough. And we're going to do this total of three rounds because we're going to actually average these numbers at the end. Okay. Afterwards, you're going to graph it. And I'm gonna kind of see where your graphing skills are. And then um, we'll do conclusion and a chi-squared analysis. The chi-squared analysis will be on a separate video. Okie dokie. So let me kind of show you what I have set up on my page so that you can set up something similar as well. So again, we're going to be looking for 10 minute setups. So as you can see, I have it saying for round one, I have the time in a column and I have number wet and number dry. So the number on the wet side and the number on the dry side. Now I have the time for every 30 seconds starting from zero all the way down to 10 minutes. And then I total, I have one, two and three rounds on my data table. You guys are going to pretty much have this exact same setup. So if you need to, you can pause and set that up on a page. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to set up on your page on a separate page, probably because the graphs are gonna, sorry, the data tables are gonna take up a whole page, is going to be the setup for your graph. So you're gonna want somewhere to write down what your independent variable is, your x-axis variable. You're gonna want somewhere to write down your y-axis or your dependent variable. And then you're going to want to put a space where you can draw your graph. Okay, we're gonna be going through and titling and labeling the graph but um, the title is always gonna be something as y as a function of x. So when we decide our x and our y, then you're going to be writing the title out after you actually decide those two variables at the top. Then you'll graph your own data, and then um, you will make a conclusion afterwards. So on the screen share, you have the graph that I just mentioned. And then you're going to um, answer analysis questions afterwards. And you should be able to see them because I also shared a document of them. Afterwards, we'll do a chi-squared analysis on a separate video. So this is the point where you should pause and then set up everything that you need to set up on your um, lab notebook. And then you're going to be recording data in this next section. So make sure that you're ready for that when you uh, unpause. So I'm setting up this, uh, these dishes to make sure that you guys are able to see all three at the same time. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but on the right side, it's gonna say the wet side. And on the left side here is gonna be the dry side. Now that means that I have to add moisture to the wet side. And I'm going to add the worms in after I add the moisture. Keep in mind that at the beginning of the timekeeping, you have to make sure that all the worms are in the middle to make it a fair kind of distribution, right? Because they're going to want to um, move around a little bit. So you're gonna make sure that they are in the middle so that they have a choice of wet and dry. And then for every 30 seconds, you're going to record your, um, 
yeah, you're going to record your data down just for number on dry and number on wet. So again, I will be telling you when you have to record those. Okie dokie. So down here, I'm going to add the water into the, to the wet side. I'm going to make sure that it's wet, but not soaked. So I'm adding a little bit of water at a time making sure the edge is wet because the worms are gonna actually try to go underneath the paper towel too. And once they go underneath, they're not coming back up. So I gotta make sure that um, it's packed down enough and that you'll be able to see what's going on. I don't wanna put more water either because I don't wanna drown the worms, right? The purpose is, is to see their behavior and not to make them unable to unable to make their own choices afterwards because if they're dead then that's not going to help us out okay so i'm going to be dropping worms in and then uh, once i say start i'm going to be uh, setting the time so let's see got to pick some worms that are alive which is honestly one of the hardest parts now let me get a paper towel to pour them out on And then that way I can pick the alive ones. So you guys would be doing this whole process yourselves in lab. If you had me recently, then you also already just did this. Um, and you kind of know what this lab's about, and you know, how weird it is to be picking around worms the whole time, like I'm doing right now. But it is just a part of lab, and it's not really that bad. It's actually kind of interesting. It makes the whole lab experience kind of fun. Kind of sucks that you guys are missing out on it right now. Although it's not, it's not fun for the teacher because I gotta pick on bugs the whole day during this lab. So just trying to find 10 worms for the first set. 10 alive worms is the key word, because there's plenty of them in the containers that aren't necessarily alive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need two more for this first set. And two more that are willing to move. Yeah, they really packed a lot of sawdust into these. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. A little harder to pick up. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. So again, I'm going to have them start in the middle and I'm going to start the time. And you're going to record your zero and now, your zero number now. So for your zero, you can write five and five. And then for your 0 0.5, you're gonna write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dry, and three. You're gonna have eight dry and two wet.
for your one minute, you're gonna have three wet and seven dry. As you can see, they don't actually move that much. At your 1.5 minutes, you're gonna have one, we're gonna count that still as three wet and seven dry. You can see them kind of flipping around there. Um, at your two minutes, we're gonna count this as still three wet and seven dry. At your 2.5, we're gonna count these as three wet and seven dry. All right, it seems like they really haven't moved. The one in the middle is maybe wavering. We can't really decide right there, but technically since it's not on the wet side, we'll count it as on the dry side. If you were wondering, the other ones are kind of underneath over here and then underneath over here. All right, so we'll start counting the one in the middle at three minutes is on the wet side. So we'll have four on the wet side and six on the dry side. Maybe it'll kind of waver back depending on where it wants to be. All right, at 3.5 minutes, we're still gonna count it as four wet and six dry. Mealworm in the middle, looks like it's turning back. So for four minutes, we're going to say three wet and seven dry. At 4.5, we're still going to say three wet and seven dry. The ones under there are honestly causing this side to lift up a lot since they're all hidden on the dry side. At five minutes, we're going to still say that it's three wet and seven dry, right? Because there's one up here and then there's two down here and then this one's still dingering in the middle, but he looks like he's turning back towards the dry side. All right, so for 5.5, it's still three wet and seven dry. You can see a little movement at the bottom of one of the ones on the wet side, kind of crawling deeper into the uh, paper towel there.
For six minutes, we're going to definitely say that there are still three wet and seven dry. The ones on the dry side aren't really moving either because they're pretty happy where they are. The ones on the wet side, that one burrowed pretty far. This one's not really moving and this one's not really moving either. At 6.5, we are still at three wet, seven dry. Sorry guys, I wish it was a little more exciting, but the mealworms honestly don't move very much or very fast. I'll take down the dry ones for the uh, next round. Okay, so for seven minutes, it's still three wet, seven dry. It might just be like this until the end, but we will take down the data, no matter what, all the way to the end. And the end being 10 minutes. Okay, for 7.5, it's still three wet, seven dry. We pretty much all stop moving. Seems like the one in the middle is moving a little closer to the dry side now and interacting with another one. Again, we have for eight minutes, we have three wet, Seven dry. Oh, you see some movement there from the one in the middle. Can't tell if he's going to make a change though. The other ones are pretty situated where they're at. Oh, there seems to be one moving towards the wet. Okay, it's still on the dry side though. So we still only have at 8.5, we have three wet and seven dry. But maybe we'll see this one that's closing on the wet side make moves. Or maybe he'll stop moving and we won't. <laughs> All right, for nine minutes, since the other one didn't make it all the way across the wet side, we still have three wet and seven dry. At 9.5, we still have three wet and seven dry. We're coming in on our last data set, uh, sorry, data point. Um, and they have about 10 seconds to make a decision if they wanna be on the dry side or the wet side. And at 10 minutes, we have still three, three wet and seven dry. So that's it for round one of data taking. So make sure that you have all your data points filled in. If you need to, you can go back in and um, double check which ones you missed and write them down. For the most part, pretty much the second half was all three wet and uh, seven dry. It did waver a little bit in the beginning. I'm going to go in and pick 10 new ones for round two. Um, so, sorry for the wait while I do that. <laughs> I'm going to have to get rid of these ones and dump them out because they've already kind of done their job for now. I'm going to leave them on the side over here so that they can just chill and I won't mix them up with the ones that already, um, that I need to 
put in brand new. The paper towel ones are a little harder to handle. Since they're a little stickier. Let me uh, tape down the dry set too. As you could see, we're having difficulties maybe counting the ones on the dry side since they were uh, going underneath. This is for the other dry circle. Make sure that that one stays down. Actually, I'll put three. If it's down, maybe we'll see them better. Maybe they'll still get under, and then we still won't see them. You never know. Okay, I gotta pick out 10 more. It's still the same. Which side is wet? Which side is dry? I think the part that takes the most time is honestly picking up the mealworms to put in. Two, four. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And more. Let's get you in there. Okay, all well, these worms really be crawling everywhere right now. Everywhere except when I want them to crawl somewhere. Okay, we can get these worms onto the petri dish and then we can start round two. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so I'm going to have them all start in the middle dish. And our, let's leave the starting time for a little bit. So it's at the top of the clock. And we're going to have our starting number as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven dry and three wet for zero. Three wet, seven dry. Okay. 
These ones look like they're moving a lot more than the other ones. So here we have one, two, three, we'll count three wet and seven dry again. For 0 0.5, it's three wet and seven dry. At one minute, we'll count it as, again, three wet and seven dry. The one in the middle is a little bit closer to the wet side. So at one minute, it's three wet and seven dry. Seems like a lot of them are moving over to the side of the dry, all the way to the dry side. And there's one all the way on the far side of the wet side. All right, for uh, 1.5 minutes, it's three wet and seven dry. I don't know if you can see the last dry one anymore at this point, but he's over there. Oh, sorry, that's the wet side. Most of the dry ones are still packed underneath. Well, one of them is leaving the wet side. All right, at two minutes, we have two on the wet side and eight on the dry side. These ones are moving quite a lot faster than the other ones. At 2.5 minutes, we still have this one all the way on the wet side and the one that's kind of in the middle, we have two wet and eight dry. Almost looks like they're fighting on the dry side. All right, at three minutes, coming up on three minutes, we still have one all the way on the wet side and then one that's kind of in the middle. So we have two wet and eight dry. At 3.5 minutes, we still have one on the wet side, one in the middle-ish. So we have two wet and eight dry at 3.5. At four minutes, we still have two wet and eight dry. You can see the one on the far wet side is starting to move a little. The one in the middle is still just chilling there. At 4.5 minutes, we have two wet and eight dry. At five minutes, we still have two wet and eight dry. Looks like the one on the far right side might be coming around soon.
At 5.5, we still have two wet and eight dry. That worm do be coming around though. At six minutes, it's still two wet, eight dry. Are you really coming around? You might even go all the way to the dry side at this rate. At 6.5, we still have two wet, eight dry. Sorry, there's a worm crawling out of the earlier section. At seven minutes, we still have two wet, eight dry. I thought that one on the right side was gonna make it all the way over, but I don't know if he's still moving or not. At 7.5 minutes, we still have two wet, eight dry. Coming up on eight minutes, we have two wet, eight dry. Again, even if the results stay the same for the whole rest of the trial or the round, you have to make sure that you record all the way to your full data time. So we will still be recording all the way to 10 minutes, even if it doesn't change. At 8.5 minutes, we have two wet and eight dry. At nine minutes, we still have two wet and eight dry. At 9.5 minutes, we still have two wet and eight dry. Although one in the middle looks like he's starting to move now. And there might be one crossing over as well, so we'll see. All right, we have one more data point left in about 10 seconds. And we're going to count that as at 10 minutes, we have three wet and seven dry, just because that one's moving over and he's about halfway over already. Okay, so I'm going to have to collect these ones up and then we're going to. Put our last 10 in. I wonder from their perspective, 
how much this just feels like being an like an alien abduction, you know. Because for them, if they get picked up like this, that means they're gonna get eaten. It's not exactly what they're aiming for, because all living things are trying to survive. Double check if there's any more. That should be it. And since I already picked out the next 10, we're going to put them in. Once the timer is ready, so again, we saw the wet side and the dry side. In about 10 seconds, I'll put the last batch in. Okay, we're gonna cut this as one. We're gonna count it as one on the wet side and nine on the dry side for our zero for our round three. One wet, nine dry for zero. For 0 0.5, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven wet, three dry. All right, at our one minute collection, we have one, two, three, four, four wet, six dry. At our 1.5, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So five wet, five dry. At two minutes, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. At two minutes, we have six wet and four dry. At 2.5 minutes, we have one, two, three, four, five, wet and five dry. At three minutes, we have one, two, three, four, five, at three minutes, we have five wet and five dry. At 3.5 minutes, we still have, oh, we have one, two, three, four. At 3.5 minutes, we have four wet and six dry. Seems like there's one heading all the way over to the far right side now. At 
at four minutes. We have four wet and six dry. At 4.5 minutes, we still have four wet and six dry. At five minutes, we still have four wet and six dry. Oh, well, that one's going underneath the wet sides. It's a little bit, I get a little stuck there. At 5.5, there's one, two, three, four on the wet side, all the ones underneath, and six on the dry side. At six minutes, there's still four on the wet side and six on the dry side. The one that's underneath right here seems like it's just stuck underneath now. At 6.5. Nothing's really changed. Four dry, six wet. Oh, sorry. Four wet and six dry. Oh, and that was underneath. Looks like he's backing out. At seven minutes, we got four wet, six dry. This one over here looks like he's back and back out after he went inside and underneath because he hit the tape. All right, at 7.5, we still have four wet and six dry. Oh, he's coming on top of the vapor now. Decided he didn't want to be underneath it anymore. So he's going to rest on top of another worm. At eight minutes, we still have four wet and six dry. Almost done now. Struggling a bit there to climb out. Same feeling you get when you're trying to climb out of bed in the morning. At 8.5 minutes, we still have four wet and six dry. Seems like the ones on the dry side are pretty determined on staying there. The only one that's really moving around is that one in the middle of the two containers on the wet side. Oh, still a little movement on the dry side too now. 
At number nine, at minute nine, we still have four on the wet side and six on the dry side. Oh, big moves on the left side. Closing in on the wet side. We'll see if he actually goes over. Oh, took a big U-turn. At 9.5, we still have four wet and six dry. Got about 20 seconds left for our last measurement to see if there are any changes. All right, and coming up on our 10 minute marker, we still have four on the wet side and six on the dry side. And that concludes our data collection for all three rounds of 10 minutes. Now, Let's go over what we're gonna be doing afterwards, and then I'll put a separate video for the chi-score analysis since this video is quite long already. So you're gonna decide what is your independent variable and what is your um, dependent variable. Now, your, sorry, let me unpin this video real quick. Actually, I'll just show both. Okay, so for the independent variable, it's gonna be the one that you cannot control or the one that, sorry, Independent variable is the one that we just followed, right? The one that um, the dependent is depending on, right? So the independent that we're gonna be graphing is actually going to be time, right? Because we're following time for our data table. And then our dependent variable that we're counting the whole time we're keeping track of time is going to be our number of mealworms, either on the wet side or the dry side. Now, if you're gonna be graphing both wet side and dry side, you're gonna to have to make sure that you are using a key or a color code, right? If you don't have um, colors to use, when you graph your points, make sure that you use different shapes as your points. You can use a square, you can use a star, you can use a circle for each point, okay? So again, for the independent variable, we're following time in minutes, and for the dependent, we're following number of mealworms, right? So that's what you're gonna be labeling the axes as. Therefore, the title is going to be um, number of mealworms as a function of time. Remember what I said earlier, how we use titles. Once you title it and you label your axes, you're gonna to have to add numbers into your axes. So make sure they're spaced out and you're using the whole entire graph, okay? And then you're going to make a key on the side for your, you're gonna be graphing both the number of wet and dry. And we're gonna do, um, we're gonna just graph round one. So you're going to just graph round one. And so your title can be uh, number of mealworms as a function of time for round one. Okay, I'm gonna conclude this video here and then um, I'll do a second video for the chi-squared analysis.